welcome to another episode of Writing Easy, the podcast that takes the act of writing, which is hard, and tries to make it just a little bit easier. I'm one of your hosts, Mary Mascari. And I'm your other host, Melissa Long. So I was supposed to go to Disney World uh, last month, and I didn't. Uh, can't imagine why. <laughs> uh, and so to console ourselves, we watched uh, The Imagineering Story on Disney+. Plus. And oh boy, if you are a creator of any kind, I recommend writing recommend writing this. I recommend watching this. And Melissa, you, you watched some of it too, right? Because I was ranting so much about it. Yeah, I kind of jumped around. Um, I probably watched two complete, ep- maybe three complete episodes. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big, big, big Disney nerd. So this was huge for me. In fact, once they started getting toward the, um, the later years, the... Um, Oh, so the Imagineering story is kind of a history of Imagineering uh, and how basically they develop the parks and different things developing the parks throughout the history of the company and how they make these creative things for, you know, and innovative things for rides in different situations. It's fascinating. Um, but yeah, when we got toward the, the uh, modern stuff, we're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, that. I rode that. You know, so it was, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. But the thing that it's about is creativity and innovation in different circumstances, Uh, financial circumstances, personal circumstances, uh, all these different things and how they, the Imagineers, rose to the challenge to create these different things. Um, The first, it starts off with just, hey, we're going to build a theme park like no one else has ever done and how they figured that out. And then it was, all right, so our creative leader just died. Uh, now what are we going to do? You know, all these different scenarios. I really found it very, very powerful. Yeah, I mean, I'm always intrigued by docu-series or documentaries like this where mm-hmm. you get insight into a beloved brand and a, like an organization. I mean, these are like, it's a household name. Like everybody knows Disney. Everybody has some kind of experience or connection to either, if not the parks themselves, the shows, mm-hmm. the movies, the cartoons, the like products, it's the toys, right? <laughs> like, and so it's fascinating to like step back and realize the story behind like bringing all of this to life and mm-hmm. the risk taking and the courage and the creativity and how like how they broke the rules. And I was intrigued from that perspective. And I think that it's, you know, fascinating to see where creativity and business meet. Like, how do you yeah. navigate that on such a large scale? Because you have to, and, and the teamwork, right? Because you have to, to, there's always that element. There's always that part that's out of your control. And to see how they did and didn't do that. Because some things, they also talked about when they weren't successful. Um and like and and the problems that they had so like you know that they were talking about the opening day of mad of disneyland and how like the the uh paint was still wet in the back of the park so they're like "Ah, let's hope it dries before they get back here (laughs) or like oh geez or how the um uh asphalt hadn't set enough because it was too fresh and so it was a hot day and then women were wearing heels because it was the 60s and uh, they sunk into the asphalt. Their heels sunk into the asphalt because it was still so soft. <laughs> Got your setbacks. Yeah, but they rolled with it. One thing that I, I like I said, I, I enjoyed seeing when they failed, not out of some sort of, you know, schadenfreude, but, you know, how they learned from it. And one of the, the stories that they told was about uh, Disney California Adventure. All right, so if you've never been to Disneyland... Uh, or haven't been there recently, there's actually two parks there now, right? There's Disneyland, the original Disneyland. And then they took what had been the parking lot and they added another another park. And when they first did it, uh, the guy in charge was about money. He was like, we're going to do this on the cheap. We don't have, you know, and people will come because it's Disneyland, right? So they'll come. And it was really bad, <laughs> The park was boring. Uh, There was not much to do there. The things that were there to do were really chintzy. Um, I actually went there during that period of time. And, you know, we wandered around. The place was empty. There was no one there. 
And I mean, there were things like, here's a walkthrough tour of how bread is made. (laughs) And it was just like a little kiosk that you walk through and they're like, you know, it was like a, like you'd see at a museum, you know, like a, like a, um, you know, and that was cool, but like, this isn't a museum. (laughs) This is an amusement park. Um, and then how they had the courage to say, all right, never mind. Let's, this is terrible. Uh, we either need to make it right or we need to close it. So they made it right and they closed it up and they tore stuff down and they stayed true to their vision, to their principles, their creative principles of, you know, making things fun and, you know, keeping the guests in mind and, and all that sort of stuff. And they, and telling a story uh, and they redid it. And I was there after the redo and I loved it and everyone else did too. It did, it did great because they stayed true to their themselves. They were, they did it their way. They didn't try to you know, cheapen it or anything like that, which is like last week we were talking about how you have to be true to yourself. You have to do it your way, not what other people's advice was. And uh, I think that's an illustration of, of that, uh, that principle. Yeah. I think what I found fascinating about those early years and the vision was some of the things that Walt Disney himself was saying around, like, Mm -hmm. you don't worry, you just do it. Like you do the best you can. And um, like he set the standard for like, we are going to do something. It is going to be world-class. Like we're not, I like, I think he even Mm -hmm. said something about like, it doesn't matter how much (laughs) the money is or like the money will come. Like you just design it. Like we'll figure that'll work itself out. Um, but that takes guts to, to be able yeah. to invest so much time and energy when everybody's telling you this can't be done or it's not going to be successful and you don't have all of the money to like throw into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like how do you set that course? And for many, many years, that was their approach was like, we're doing it. It's going to be out of this world. We're going to do whatever it takes to make this an amazing experience and different from other amusement parks at the time. Um, mm mm-hmm. And that's like, I think if they stay true to those core values, like that's where over the course of the, at least the documentary, that's where you see they had the most success was when they went back Mm -hmm. to like these core values and principles of what they're trying to do and what they represent. Yeah, they were lucky that they had, uh, they had Walt there to be as a a beacon, right? He had the vision and he was able to inspire them and help them get it. And so they had that to build on even after he died. Uh, it was they still had, you know, what would Walt do? Um, and that kind of guided them at the same time. They had to find their own way. Right. Because Walt was, in fact, dead and they couldn't just keep following that. Uh, and they talked about that, about how they had to grow. So things like um, they put uh, some characters into uh, it's a small world. Um, just to, to update it, to make it new and. People were like, oh, you can't possibly. But they stayed true to to the 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 heart of the ride, heart of the attraction. And, you know, it, it works out. So they they balance those two things about, you know, finding who you are, staying true to that. But then you can't get stuck in a rut either. And I think they, they did a good job of that. Yeah. After we watched, I watched some of this, I like did some Google searches and was like, looking for like I was actually looking for more quotes because I was like I remembered watching it and thinking oh that's a really cool line or that's a really like something that I want to hang on to and then I yeah. couldn't remember which episode it was in <laughs> like, and I was like yeah, I maybe taken somebody notes. else has like written this down um, but I did run across this really interesting article that was actually not from Disney but was um, from Pixar, which is another one of our favorite companies that we talk about so much and is very deeply connected to Disney, now owned by Disney. And um, in this, it was a Harvard Business Review article, and they were talking about good ideas versus good people. And that there's almost Ah. this 50-50 split between executives or, or people who approach creativity as like, the idea is king. And as long as you have the, there's like certain people that just have really great ideas. And as long as you have those people, you'll be successful. And then there's this other group of thinkings like, okay, it's not just the ideas. It's like, if you have great people and put them in the right environment, like the ideas will come as long as you give space for the ideas to develop and for the creativity Mm -hmm. and the failure and all that needs to happen. Um, that will still allow those good people to come up with great ideas. And yeah. I had never thought of either one of those approaches, but they were talking <laughs> about like that was 
part of what Pixar was trying to do. And in a sense, I think the Imagineers tried to do because when they were bringing those different um, designers together and people from movie studios and starting to build the first park, it was like they weren't taking other people who had, who were architects, who had experience building yeah. and just designing. They were taking people who were doing stuff for movies and stuff for like in other fields and pulling them together and saying like, create this vision and a way that we yeah. hadn't seen before. Yeah, I, I think that was great, those challenges, and that they, they had the courage, the creative courage to go, all right, let's see. Now, it helped, again, they were being inspired. They trusted Walt. I, I, I keep bringing this up because that's something that can sometimes be missing for writers because we're so solitary, you know, is this idea of teamwork. Um, you know, and I see that they had a whole team of people. I'm like, oh, I want a team. I don't have a team. I'm myself. But that's not true. You have a team and, and you have to kind of build your own team. But, I, I, you know, and how much you involve them in the creative process is up to you. But you're not alone. You know, later in your career, you might have professionals who are working with you. But even so, you can still have friends and peers, people you trust, people you respect. It's important to find. And they'll give you courage. We don't have a lot to say specifically about writing for this, and uh, but I think it's such a great document of the creative process under very challenging and very distinctive conditions that I think it's worth a watch uh, for any creator. I think you'll find things that uh, encourage you, th things that inspire you, things that give you ideas. Oh, oh, I remember what the other one was. was the uh, This was a thing that Joe Rohde said about fishing for ideas, about how the, the idea will go through so many permutations and it's not right. Nope, not this, not this, not this. And how they, they have the patience to keep trying and to wait to find the right idea. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have these different iterations. And I wish to heck I could think of a specific example, but I can't. But just be like... They'll do all this work and be like, like this? I'm like, mm, no, no, this isn't it. Okay, throw it out. Let's try something else. Knowing that that's part of the process and having the courage to throw things out and the patience to wait for the right thing, I found that very inspiring. Oh, that's so interesting because I know Pixar does the, the brain trust when they like mm -hmm. screen a new movie. And after that, they get all the feedback from it, all the executives and the writers and, and um, digital artists, and then they scrap it. <laughs> and then they mm -hmm. start over like they don't yeah. rewrite like like they just re-break the whole story and start over and it's that yeah. same willingness of like letting go and then when I was doing the tour of um, Bad Robot they were talking to us about like they will design they have like a maker space and they will like create uh. characters and design things and like they have this one character and they're like we don't know what we're gonna do with it we've had it for like six years and then they're just like we're just waiting for the right thing to come yeah. along like that patience of like I recognize potential when I see it I don't exactly yeah. know what it's going to look like or how it's going to develop but I'm going to hang on to this and at some point it like will find the right story home project I like realization of this creative seed that has sparked yeah yeah that that's really important and uh and night and comforting to hear <laughs> at least for me <laughs> So go ahead, throw it all out. <laughs> throw it all out. Throw it out, start over. Start or the thing that they said about Tolkien, about how he would, what he did is rewrites. He would literally, literally rewrite. Like, because, yeah. it, you know, he doesn't, and part of it is just the technology, right? Like, if you want to rewrite, we can, we have the same thing. We can just edit what we've got. But, you know, you have to retype it. And even in doing that, you see it in a different light. I personally have not yet had the patience to try that, but it's out there. People I may do it. <laughs> I may need to do it. They're and they're long term projects. I think which also resonates with writers that they're not quickie do things. Yeah, it's it takes a long time, and I I think that's also good to look at. Well, all right. Once again, in our concise and organized way, we have <laughs> discussed this. But I think to, just to close, we'd say I'd recommend. If you can, if you've got Disney Plus, do try to watch it or just try to read about Imagineers because they're a really great uh, phenomenon, very creative uh, uh, force, and I think you can learn a lot from them. Agreed. And, <laughs> sorry, I didn't know if you had anything else. <laughs> Agreed. I'm always like, let's wait. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, with that, I think we'll just tell you that writing is hard. So take it easy. 
I'm Mary. And I'm Melissa. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.